All right, guys, this will be the last two chapters of um, the review. And then you will have seen every single problem worked out from here. So uh, here we go. This should be very familiar because it's the more recent stuff. Um, so this first one, it says simplify the expression. Remember, we always talked about noticing the difference between this and this. Um, in number one, you are subtracting things. In number two, you are multiplying. So number one does not foil. Number two does foil. So if you want to rewrite it, um, you can rewrite it like this, three minus seven, and then you would have a positive I minus a positive six I. Um, so if you want to put your terms together, kind of use that, um, set up instead, you totally can. Um, you don't have to. You can just go 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Um, I minus a 6i is a negative 5i. And that's as simple as you can go with it. Remember, we want the um, real part of the answer first and the complex or the imaginary part of the answer second. Technically, that whole thing is a complex answer. Um, number 2, you're going to FOIL that. So we're going to do first is 15, outside is 6i, inside is negative 20i, and last is a negative 8i squared. Um, remember, a negative 8i squared, this whole thing, is actually a positive 8 because i squared equals negative 1. So you have 15 plus 8, which is 23. And then you can combine the i part of it. So 6i minus 20i is a negative 14i. So that's number two. Uh, number three, we are adding again. So yeah, don't foil this one. Um, negative four plus five would be one. And negative nine i plus a negative seven i is a negative 16 i. Um, so 1 minus 16i would be the simplified version of that. Number 4 here, um, the square root of 25i. Remember, we kind of broke this into the square root of negative 1 and the square root of 25, if you want. Um, so that would be 3 times i times 5. Um, this is multiplication between the 3 and the radical. So we still want multiplication there. And now it's 3 times i times 5. Um, plus 4 at the end, and you can combine that to 15i. Um, and then we have that plus 4. Remember, we put the real part out in front. Um, so we're going to do 4 plus 15i would be our best way to write that answer. Okay, now we're going to solve um, some quadratics. So remember, when there's no b term, right, it's ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Um, when there is no bx, like you see on number five here, that's when we do solving by square roots. So this is the one where we're trying to isolate the x squared, actually. So we're going to add 16, and we get x squared equals 16, and then we're going to square root. Um, remember, when you square root both sides, you must, must, must do plus or minus, and then the square root of 16 is 4, so x equals plus or minus 4. All right, number 6. Um, this one, you kind of have to think through, like, what are your options here? Um, this is not going to be solving by square roots. You could see if star method would work. So negative 11 and 2 would be a negative 22. This would be a negative 3. What can you multiply to get negative 22 that you can add to get 3? That doesn't work. Um, so when that doesn't work, um, you can either try completing the square, but this one is a weird number because it's a negative three. So when you cut that in half, you get a decimal. So that doesn't work. Um, when in doubt, the one that will always work is the quadratic formula. So if you're not sure which one to do, just do the quadratic and this will be there for you. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. Sorry, not that part over 2a. Um, so we'll take this. This is your a, your b, 
and your C. So negative B is a positive 3, plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 11, all over 2 times that 2. Um, so this will be your solution eventually. You just got to break it down, simplify it a little bit. Remember, this is where we plug this into the calculator. Don't square root it. We just want to know what that number is. Um, that number comes out to 97, I believe. So 3 plus or minus the square root of 97 over 4. Um, if you can break down this radical into a perfect square and a non-perfect square, you do, but this one actually doesn't. There is no perfect square that 97 is divisible by. So that is just your answer. All right, number seven. Um, this one does factor. And if it does, it's definitely the quicker, easier route, in my opinion. So what can you multiply to get negative 10 that you can add to get three? Um, that's going to be, I'll let you think of it for a second. Yes, that's going to be five and negative two. Good job. Um, so this is x plus five and x minus two equal to zero. Now, remember, it said to solve the quadratic equation. So if you're solving, we want to know what x equals. So that's where you say x plus 5 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. So this one, x equals negative 5. And this one, add the 2, x equals 2. Um, so that will be your solutions, five, negative 5, positive 2. All right, then number 8. Uh, again, this is a solved by square roots because there's no bx term here. So we're going to isolate the x uh, squared on this one. So 3x squared equals negative 48. Um, don't square root at this point. We have to isolate completely. So we have to divide by 3. And we get x squared equals a negative 16. And then you can square root both sides. And remember, when you square root both sides, you get x equals plus or minus. And then the square root of a negative, that means there's going to be an i involved. So the square root of 16 is 4. Square root of negative 1 is i. So plus or minus 4i. All right, number 9. Um, it says, what system describes this graph? Um, so if you look at what we're working with here, um, first of all, this is a vertical line. Okay, and it's a solid vertical line and it is at negative two okay so you can rule out a couple of these right now um, first of all a vertical line remember when we wrote it as an equation was always x equals is a vertical line well this has shading so it's going to be a inequality but because it's a solid line right if it's solid it's going to be less than or equal to or greater than or equal to so just knowing that we know there's got to be an x is greater than or equal to or x is less than or equal to a negative 2 because it falls at negative 2. So this one's still a possibility. Um, this one is not because it doesn't have the equal to bar underneath. So if one doesn't work, it's completely out. Um, this is a positive 2, and there isn't a vertical line at positive 2. The positive 2 would be here, right? There isn't one there. So this one's out. Um, so x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So these both are okay. Okay. Um, then these ones are the same. So you don't even need to look into that one because they're exactly the same on both of them. The thing that's different is this versus this. And if you think about what line is y equals x, that's 0, 0, and 1, 1, and 2, 2, and 3, 3. So that's this line right here that you're looking at. Um, notice it is a dotted line. And if that is a dotted line, that's got to be greater than, not greater than or equal to. So A is out. D will be your answer. I love ones like that. That's so fun, huh? Um, okay. Number 10. It says, which of these is the standard form of y equals um, 8x plus 12? Okay, so on this one, again, I always stress that I'm not as picky on this, but they don't love to have a leading negative. So typically what they will do 
is move the y over to this side, subtract y, and move the 12 over to the other side, so subtract 12. So your best answer here, um, 8x minus y equals negative 12 would be the best answer. Um, I typically will take that one too, but the best standard form is without a leading negative, um, so that would be letter D here. Okay. Um, okay, this says, which number completes the square of the expression? Sorry, that was my dog yawning, if you heard that. Um, so completing the square, right? This is how we would write it in the homework. X squared plus 6X plus what, right? We're trying to figure out what would go here. And this is the 1 half of B, and we square it. So your B term is a 6. So half of 6 would be 3 and three squared would be nine. So the perfect squared trinomial would be x squared plus six x plus nine, okay? Um, number 12, which expression is simplified? This is a FOIL problem. So we're gonna go first is negative 12, outside is a positive three i, inside is a positive, because those are both negative, eight i, and then last is going to be a negative 2i squared. So now I'll simplify a little bit. This is a positive 2. So negative 12 plus 2 is a negative 10. So you can see your answer right now already. But let's just finish it to make sure we didn't do something wrong. Uh, 3i plus 8i is 11i. So negative 10 plus 11i. Okay. All right, on to chapter five here. Um, it says write each polynomial in standard form and then classify it by degree and by number of terms. So um, you have a 4x to the fourth minus x to the fourth. So that's going to be a 3x to the fourth because this is like a 1, right? So 4 minus 1 is 3 plus 6x to the third minus 2. So this is your standard form. So that's the first part of the answer. Um, the second part of the answer is to classify it. So if we classify it by its degree, um, a degree of four is called a quartic. And then the number of terms, one, two, three terms is a trinomial. So this is a quartic trinomial. Okay. Um, number two, if we simplify that, it is 9x squared. This is not minus, this is plus. 3x squared, so that's 12x squared minus 2x. Um, so this is your standard form. And then to classify it, um, it is a degree of 2. This is the one people often get confused on because they think quadratic and they think 4. But this is a quadratic, and it is two terms, so a binomial. Okay, one term, two terms, so a quadratic binomial. Um, and then the last one, you would start by foiling that first. So let's foil um, this thing. x squared plus 6x minus 5x minus 30. But then that whole thing is going to get multiplied by 4x. Um, you can simplify this. So 6x minus 5x is just x. So now we're going to go 4x times x squared is 4x cubed. 4x times x is 4x squared. And then 4x times a negative 30 is a negative 120x. So this is your standard form. That's the first part. Um, and then we need to name it. So a degree of 3 is called a cubic. And then 3 terms is called a trinomial. So this is a cubic trinomial. Remember, one term is a monomial. Um, and then I would go back and look at the chart. I think, let's see, in your notes, it would have been 5, 2, 5, 1. Maybe it's 5, 1. It's 5, 1 or 5, 2. Um, that has the chart of all of the names by degree and by number of terms. Okay. Um, okay. Then this one says find the real solutions uh, by graphing. Um, I'm going to say on this one, if you have questions about it, ask someone nearby. Uh, I feel like we have done this a lot. You're going to put this in as your Y1, 
you're going to put zero in as your Y2. Um, you're going to hit zoom six to see it. And then this says find the real solution. So there are some imaginaries in this one. This one only ends up with one real solution. So if you plug this into your calculator, you will see one place where it hits the X axis. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to hit um, second trace five. Okay. And then it's enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. Okay. Um, and that will get you your zero. But like I said, this is just the one real solution. There's technically three solutions. That means there's two imaginaries here. Um, we just don't see them when we graph them. So, because they're imaginary, right? Yay, imaginary. Um, but your answer, the one that is a real solution, is a negative 0.60. Okay. All right, number five. Write a polynomial with a, with, sorry, let's say, try that again. A polynomial function with rational coefficients so that p of x equals zero has the roots or the zeros, two, three, and five. Okay, so the factored form of this would be, if we're turning these into zeros, x minus two is a zero of two, right? x minus 3 is a 0 of 3, and x minus 5 is a 0 of 5. So your factored form looks like this. Then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to FOIL the first two. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to ignore that third one for now, and I'm going to FOIL. So x squared minus 3x minus 2x plus 6. Okay, so that's x squared minus 5x plus 6, and then we're going to multiply that by this guy, x minus 5. Um, so again, I you know how I like to do this. I like to go this way. So this is x cubed minus 5x squared plus 6x, and then go to the next guy, minus 5x squared, Uh, plus 25x minus 30. Okay, so this is your setup. Um, and then from here, now we can simplify a little bit. So x cubed, this is minus 5x squared minus 5x squared. So that's going to be minus 10x squared. And then 6x plus 25x is going to be a plus 31x. Um, and then we're left with a minus 30 at the end. So this would be your polynomial. Number six here says find the zeros of each function, state the multiplicity of any multiple zeros. So um, you start by looking at each individual factor. So to make this a zero, x would have to be a positive one, um, but that has a multiplicity of two, so you can just write one molt two. Um, this one, to make it a zero, you would have to say two x minus three equals zero, and then add three, and then divide by two. So that would be three halves, and that has a multiplicity of three, because the exponent is a three. So five solutions, one molt two, and three halves molt three. Okay. Um, all right, number seven. This one, um, same idea. You're going to set each of them equal to zero. So 3x minus 2 equaling zero. Add the 2 and then divide by 3. So x is 2 thirds with a multiplicity of 5. Um, x is also, if you set this equal to zero, that would be a negative four with a multiplicity of two. So those would be your zeros. Last one. Um, when there is an x here that is not a binomial, you're not adding or subtracting to it, that is always going to be zero. Um, that one is squared, so it's going to be zero molt two. Uh, this one will be negative 2 with a multiplicity of 3. 
and then this one is a negative one. So that's your setup on that one. All right, on to factoring. Um, first thing you wanna do on this problem is you wanna factor out the x. So you're left with x squared minus 10x plus 16 equal to zero. And then you can do star method. So 16, what can you multiply to get 16 that you can add to get negative 10? Your A term is one. Um, so this one is gonna work out to be a negative eight and a negative two. So don't forget about that X out in front. And then it is X minus eight and then it's X minus two equal to zero. And we're solving here, right? We're looking for what are our zeros. So x would have to equal, for this guy, it would be zero. For this one, it would be a positive eight. And for this one, it would be a positive two to make that whole equation equal to zero. All right, number 10, this one gets a little fancier. This is a quartic, right? So when it goes four, two, and then nothing, um, that's when we do star method, but the quartic way where we have x squared instead of x at the front. So we're gonna say, what can we multiply to get 12 that we can add to get negative seven? And our A term is one here. Um, so this one is going to be a negative four and a negative three. And here's where you write it differently. This is x squared minus four and x squared minus three. And then you just set both of those equal to zero and solve. So if x squared minus four equals zero, or if x squared minus three equals zero, um, you would add four. So x squared equals four, and then take the square root. And when you square root both sides, plus or minus, square root of four is two. So x equals plus or minus two. And then this one, add the three, and take the square root of both sides. So plus or minus the square root of three, you can't simplify, so you just leave that as root three. And that is your answer. Four answers, right? Plus or minus, plus or minus, because this is a quartic. All right, uh, number 11. Okay, so now this one, this says solve by factoring. Um, so this is already, like we can see what the zero is there. We can't see what the zero is here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do star method, negative 40, positive three, one and one. Um, if you end up distributing that, I mean, I guess you could, no, but it says by factoring. Um, you would have to factor the whole thing again. So don't distribute the x plus two, just leave the x plus two by itself and then factor this part of it. Um, so what can you multiply to get a negative 40 that you can add to get three? That's going to be eight and negative five. So you get X plus two, X plus eight, and X minus five equal to zero. Um, and now you can see your zeros very easily. This zero X equals negative two. This one would be a negative eight. And this one would be a positive five. Um, if we were trying to make those binomials, each one equal zero. All right, and then number 12, um, you're going to factor out an x first. So you're left with x squared plus 3x minus 54 equals zero. And then we can do our star. So a negative 54, a positive 3. Um, so what can you multiply to get 54? that you can add, negative 54, that you can add to get three. That's gonna be nine and a negative six. So this is x times x plus nine times x minus six equals zero. And then just simplify, find your x's. So this one, x is gonna equal zero. This one would be a negative nine and this one would be a positive six. So zero, negative nine and six would be your solutions. All right, um, 13, what is P of negative five if P of X equals that? Um, this is the one where you set this up in synthetic division and your remainder is your answer. 
Um, so with synthetic division, if you recall, there is um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, a negative one here, a negative four here, a positive one here, and a negative two there. So this is going to be negative one, negative four, positive one, negative two. Okay, and then um, when it says what is p of negative five, that's the number that we put there. Okay, so p of negative five, we're going to put the negative five there, not the opposite of it like we do with when we actually do the division um, on a problem like 14. Okay, so from here, now we're going to solve. Remember, you take down your first one and then you multiply. Negative 5 times negative 1 is a positive 5. Okay. Um, now we go negative 4 plus 5 is a positive 1. And then we do it again. Negative 5 times 1 is a negative 5. Okay. Now we go vertically again. 1 plus a negative 5 is a negative 4. And multiply again. So now it's negative 5 times negative 4 is a positive 20. And now you can add, and remember that last one is your remainder. So we always put that little box there. Um, negative two plus 20 is 18. And that is your answer when it asks you what P of something is. So P of negative five here is 18. And then you're done, okay? You don't have to write that out as the trinomial with a remainder. You can just leave it like that. Okay, um, 14 and 15, it says use synthetic division to do the dividing here. So we're going to set this one up, same way, upside down box. That's a terrible line. Okay, um, check the order, 3, 2, 1, 0. So there's no misses here. Remember, if there's nothing there, you put a 0 in. There isn't any of that in this one. Um, so we would go 1 negative 4, 1, and negative 5. Um, and then here's where if we're dividing by x plus 2, the 0 there is negative 2. So we're putting in a negative 2 here. And then we can do the whole process. We're going to take down the 1, and we go 2, um, negative 2, rather, times 1 is a negative 2. Okay, and now we add negative 4 plus a negative 2 is a negative six. And now we can say negative two times negative six is a positive 12. And again, we add down one plus 12 is 13. And now we can multiply negative two times 13 is a negative 26. Um, and then here is our last little piece, which will be our remainder. Um, so we're gonna add down negative five plus a negative 26 is a negative 31. And so they're saying divide, right? So x plus two times what would get us this whole thing? And that's gonna be, this is our trinomial then. So this is the constant, this is the linear term, this is the quadratic term. So this is gonna be x squared minus six x plus 13 with a remainder of negative 31. Um, okay, and then number 15, one more of the synthetic division. This one is a little bit different because it's missing the x squared, right? So this is a 0x squared in the middle of it. So we're going to set it up like this. Um, so our first number is going to be 2. Our next number is going to be the 0 because it's missing the x squared. Our next number will be a negative 4, and then the last one will be 3. Um, this, the zero that we get is um, a positive one right here. So then from here, you're going to take down the two. Okay, uh, one times two is two. And now we add zero plus two is two. Um, do it again. One times two is two. Hold on, my dog is getting into something. Sorry. Um, so negative four 
plus two is gonna give us a negative two right here. And then this last one is our remainder. Um, one times a negative two is a negative two, and we add those together and we get a remainder of one. Um, and then again, this is your constant, your linear, your quadratic in this setup. So this is gonna be two x squared plus two x minus two with a remainder of one. And that'll be your answer. All right, on to number 16 here. Um, this says, find a cubic function to model the data. Um, X equals years after 1960. So notice X equals 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 43. Okay, so that's what you're putting in as your L1, and then this is your L2. Again, I can't really um, show you this on my calculator, but there are people sitting around you that know how to do this, or maybe because you just did it, it's still fresh enough in your head. Um, but you're going to use the stat function to put your L1 and your L2 in. Um, and this says find a cubic function. Uh, I forget right now what that number is because I'm making this video before I've even taught it to you in class this year. <laughs> um, you're gonna go stat over to calc and then six is your cubic regression. So um, you'll do that and then you come up, it says find the cubic model, that's your equation for this. So the, when you plug this in, the equation that you get is this. 1.065x cubed minus 5.841x squared plus 0.022x plus 1.718. So this is the equation. Um, so when it says estimate the deaths for the year um, 26, just, sorry, 2006, um, think about what that means. We had 43, <clears throat> excuse me, um, as our number for 2003. That was the 43rd year after 1960. So 2006 would be where your X is 46. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to plug the 46 in here to get your answer. I've not done that. Let me do that real fast. Okay, just kidding. I just plug this all in and it comes out super goofy. Um, these numbers are like 10 to the negative whatever, which means you have to move decimals over. These are awful numbers. I'm sorry. You can just don't worry about that one. But had this come out nicely, I mean, this is the process, right? Stack, calc. Um, six is the cubic regression. We just did this in class. This is just a not great chart and I don't have my tools in front of me. So don't worry about that. Um, 17 here says, which of these quadratic equations has the factors X minus two and X minus three? The way you can tell is just FOIL it. X squared minus three X minus two X. So that's X squared minus five X negative two times negative three is a positive six. Um, so that would be letter C right here. Um, 18, which polynomial is written in standard form? Uh, standard form has to be descending order of your exponents. So standard form would be D because it goes three, one, zero. This one goes zero, one, two. This goes two, zero, three. This goes one, two. So none of those um, are standard form. Um, this one, what is the axis of symmetry of this equation? So this is in vertex form. Remember, this is H and K, which means your vertex right now is the point. It's the opposite of what it looks like inside, so a positive three, and the same as what it looks like outside, which is a positive five. So if your vertex is three, five, think about it this way. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, here's your vertex. 
the axis of symmetry is the vertical line that goes through that. So it's where your x value is always 3. So this is your axis of symmetry. Um, number 20 says to solve. So a negative 3 and a negative 4 would be solutions. So that's this guy. Um, and then 21, find the roots by graphing. And again, I can't show you my graph, um, so I will just tell you what the solutions should be. That's letter D here. Um, but this is the one where you want your plots off. Right? Um, that's the little box when you hit Y equals. So if you hit Y equals, you want to clear that out. Turn your plots off, and you want to put this um, in x so y1 should be x cubed plus x squared minus 17 x plus 15 and then y2 you want to put in a zero which may or may not already be there depending on what the last thing you did with your calculator was um, and then you go second trace and then five because we want to find the intersect Okay. Um, and then it's enter three times. Okay, then you move, well, once you find your zero, so whichever one it gives you first, maybe it's the one on this one, I'm not sure, because I don't have my calculator in front of me. Um, but once you find your first zero, then you'll do it again. Second, trace, five, um, then arrow to a different zero, a different x-intercept and then enter three times again, okay? And then you do that whole process one more time on the third x-intercept, ultimately you get that. All right, happy final examining. Um, I will at some point have posted a study session for the Monday in the second, like the afternoon block, not block, the afternoon after the second block of exams. Um, I just don't know exactly what time that's going to be yet because we're still a couple weeks out when I'm making this video. So come on by on Monday um, if you want to ask some questions.